So thank you very much for the introduction, Dr. Sage Mombegan. Uh, this presentation deals with a particular experiment on land cover and land use classification in the Amazon using the OBIA paradigm. And this type of classification meets the needs of routine monitoring of the forest to serve the purposes of detection of legal activities, environmental monitoring and management, public infrastructure planning, support to private mining, agricultural and forestry companies, civil defense operations, and military actions and training. Somehow, all these activities are interrelated. The reverse climatic conditions of this rainforest makes the use of SAR images a feasible alternative for the ongoing monitoring of both urban and rural demands. Uh, which is usually needed by public authorities, uh, private and public enterprises, as well as farmers and cattle raisers. Land cover and land use mapping in rural environments of the Amazon from SAR images is a challenging task. In view of the similar behavior of the concerned targets of interest, what demands highly qualified interpreters. In most cases, SAR images are visually interpreted what results in a time and effort consuming procedure. And even conventional digital image processing techniques, uh, they also present constraints. In this way, this work introduces an alternative cognitive approach for interpreting uh, land cover and land use from SAR images based on the use of a hierarchical semantic network and fuzzy logic in interimage, which is an open source object-based platform designed for the interpretation of remote sensing images. The airborne SAR sensor used in this work is Orbisar, which is produced by the Brazilian enterprise Orbisat, which created the video we are now watching. So the sensor contains two bands, X and P, the former with a wavelength of approximately uh, from 2.5 to 3.8 centimeters, and the X band from uh, 30 to 120 centimeters. Both of them can operate in any polarization mode simultaneously. And this sensor system enables the acquisition of very high resolution images, up to a half meter in the X band and up to a one and a half meters in the P band. So, and uh, this sensor, uh, you can notice that the X band, uh, their waves are usually backscattered by the forest canopy. And the P band waves are penetrate the vegetation and are backscattered by thicker branches and the soil. So it allows the acquisition of the soil surface under the vegetation. In this particular experiment, both images from these two bands, they were originally generated with two and a half meters, and only the HH polarization mode has been processed. As to interimage, uh, we can state that it's based on a German platform named GeoIDA, developed by the TNT Institute from the University of Hanover. So it inherited from it its basic functional design, knowledge structure, and control mechanisms. Uh, at the first stage, segments from a given class can overlap segments from other classes. So here we see a simple example of its interpretation strategy, where A is the father of classes B and C, and B is the father of classes D and E. So the top-down operator will scan the semantic network from the root to the leaf nodes and it identifies a region which could potentially contain A. It's not yet a final segment, just a hypothesis. Uh, the top-down operators associated to the classes uh, B and C are executed, and hypotheses for these two classes are generated. Uh, they are identified within the boundaries of uh, hypothesis A, and following the sequence, the top-down operators of classes D and E are executed, and hypotheses for these two classes are generated. So we see only one region for D and one for E are found within B1. 
So uh, when the processing, the leaf nodes ends, the bottom-up analysis starts. So from this moment on, bottom-up operators enter into action, scan the semantic network from the leaf nodes to the root, judging the hypotheses associated to the classes and solving eventual conflicts, which are the overlapping regions. So you can see, for instance, that uh, if B2 does not contain either D or E, it is discarded. And the part of B2 which was overlapping C was subtracted from it. And finally, the classification, the other levels of the semantic net is built. So uh, the corresponding discarded B2 region was subtracted from A together with the regions that do not contain either B or C. So here we then see the final region associated to class A in red. Uh, in the immediately lower level, we see the regions corresponding to classes B and C. And in the lowest and most refined level, we see the regions corresponding to classes D and E. So here we see uh, the graphical user interface of interimage and an example of a semantic net. The study area in this experiment concerns Paragomina city and its rural surroundings located in the northern state of Pará, northern of Brazil. The municipality itself extends over a surface of approximately 20,000 square kilometers. It comprises a population estimated at nearly 98,000 inhabitants in 2010, of which 90,000 lived in the city. The aerial survey of this experiment was executed from February 11th to March 14th in 2007 with a flight height of 11,000 meters and in the east-west direction. So the SAR images acquired over the area for bands X and P in the HH polarization mode have a maximum radiometric resolution of 32 bits and as I said previously, spatial resolution of two and a half meters. The scene sub area for analysis contained 2,641 rows by 2,367 columns. So in this classification experiment, initially, two solutions for the elaboration of the semantic network arose as possible. Either we started discriminating two big groups of classes, urban areas and non-urban areas, or we placed all of the land cover and land use classes at the same level. Uh, the first solution uh, would result uh, unfeasible for us. The first segmentation trials could not precisely delimit the urban boundaries. So the first solution would result in a rather complex network with the creation of successive classes of commission error in the subsequent nodes. So the second solution was then adopted, for it could eliminate necessary complexities in the semantic network. It could preserve the frontiers of interest and also maintain appropriate object size for future extraction. So the best segmentation result was based on three input bands, the data range of the X band using occurrence measures, and both the X and P bands, both of them subject to the enhanced frost filter, which is an edge preserving filter for noise removal. Each of these three bands have been assigned equally weight one. They have been respectively coded as band zero, band one, and band two. The value of 290 was employed as a scale factor, uh, one for compactness and 0.7 for shape parameter. All the filtering operations were done in AMV 4.7. So here we then see the segmentation result, the initial one, and we also see a reference map produced by a team of expert photo interpreters of Orbisat. Even though the segmentation result was regarded as satisfactory, uh, some small adjustments were necessary. This was done through manual vector, vector addition, uh, and it altered the shape of nearly 30 segments. This procedure didn't uh, alter more than 30 segments. 
and uh, it, we regarded it as necessary uh, since it we intended to preserve the agreement between the segment's limits and the real boundaries of the targets of interest. So here we then see the edited segmentation in relation to the reference map. And here we then see the reference map placed above the original and the edited segmentation. So the red circles indicate the main changes. In the exploratory analysis for feature selection, the reduced separability among classes became evident for we employed 8-bit radiometric resolution images since this was a constraint of the Uber platform uh, at the time this experiment was done. So at this time we can conclude that SAR images provide information on the geometrical structure, electrical properties and moisture level of the targets, but the reduced content of many fold physical chemical properties of them is considerably reduced as compared to optical images. All the information available for classification is exclusively based on two bands, X and P. The use of a degraded radiometric resolution from 32 to 8 bits, as previously informed, tends to drastically reduce the separability among classes. Another aggravating factor in this particular experiment is the fact that land cover and land use classes of interest have similar backscattering response, as it is the case of bare soil and pasture, forest and regrowth, or even cropland and bare soil. Texture metrics are appropriate for discriminating land cover and land use classes in SOAR images. However, with 8 bits of radiometric resolution and usually operating with the mean of objects, all the richness of the information is practically lost. And it would be ideal to deal with the standard deviation of texture metrics. But this is operationally impossible unless if uh, generated separately in a GIS. So this is just an illustrative slide, a sketch actually, to give you an idea of how noisy 8-bit SAR images tend to be in comparison with uh, optical 11-bits, very high resolution images. Uh, and these images, of course, separability among classes is enhanced. So uh, then uh, we try to overcome these hindrances generating a principal component analysis with seven input bands, as you see here, using the PNX bands, the data range of the PNX bands, the variance of P and the X bands, all of them using occurrence measures, and the dissimilarity of the P band using co-occurrence measures. In all cases, filters had a, a three by three window size. Another strategy consisted in creating a customized arithmetic attribute based on the sum of four bands. The standard variation of the X band using occurrence measures, the standard deviation of the similarity of the X band also using concurrence measures, the standard deviation of the fourth PCA, and the standard deviation of the variance of the X band using concurrence measures. So in the bottom right corner of the slide, we see the result of this sum. Again, all filters had a three by three window size. So in the final semantic network, we can notice that regrowth uh, was based on two attributes, the negative of the mean of the X band and the standard deviation of the enhanced frost of the X band. The characterization of the class forest considered two attributes, the negative of the P band and the mean of the homogeneity of the X band using co-occurrence measures. Repairing vegetation took into account two attributes derived from the PCA transform, the negative of the mean of the first PCA band using a crisp curve and the mean of the first PCA band using a fuzzy curve. Bare soil was extracted by means of the second angular moment of the enhanced frost applied to the P-band and the negative of the mean of the P-band. Cropland was identified based on the negative of the standard deviation of the first PCA band and the mean of the sixth PCA band. 
while their bodies on their turn were discriminated by means of the negative of the mean of the p-band, the standard deviation of the entropy of the x-band using occurrence measures, and the negative of the standard deviation of the first PCA band. Pasture and grasslands, they were characterized by the mean variance of the x-band using occurrence measures and the negative of the mean of the p-band. And finally, urban areas, uh, which uh, reliability parameter was superior to that assigned to all of the other classes, they were discriminated by the negative of the mean of the p-band and that customized arithmetic attribute based on the sum of four bands. In all cases, the minimum fuzz operator, uh, it was used for aggregating the membership values. So here is an example of attributes used to discriminate water bodies, which comprise lakes, lagoons, and dams. Some of them are crisp. Here we see a fuzzy curve related to the mean of the homogeneity of the X band. Here we see some attributes used to characterize forests. In this case, the mean of the P band is a crisp curve. Some of them in has been split into subcurves. This is a fuzzy curve related to the standard deviation uh, of the homogeneity of the X band. And this is the curve associated to the customized attribute used to discriminate urban areas. So uh, in the case of the urban areas, uh, we find out that there were artificial boundaries in the reference map probably due to the outskirt areas, which are not yet completely occupied. And hence, they cannot be directly extracted from the images. So for this reason, we tried to use um, filters that could compensate for this. This is the final classification result. We see again the reference map produced by Orb Orbisat in the upper left corner. Actually, only five objects were wrongly classified. They are indicated by the red circles. So uh, if we look at first glance, this is the manually edited classification and the reference to the left-hand side. Everything seems wonderful. But we, if we zoom in, we find out that some problems have happened. Initially, the class forest owns only two objects in the right edge of the scene. So the attributes and the respective thresholds, they tend to be biased because we have a very limited number of objects for sampling. And uh, of course, the object in the bottom right corner was wrongly classified. Another problem occurred with small lakes that could not have been detected during segmentation. If the scale parameter were reduced, this would lead us to an over-segmentation, which would certainly cause prejudice to the uh, classification. And of course, it would render the semantic network excessively complex, because we would then have child nodes of water bodies under nodes of most remaining classes. Another problem happened with the riparian vegetation class. We noticed some omission and commission errors. Of course, this is mainly due to the scale parameter. But we can also as ascribe this to the geometric and spatial distribution pattern of this land cover class. You can notice all problems related to this omission and commission errors inside the red circles. Uh, regarding the statistical validation, we tried to extract 500 random points through stratified sampling based on the share of each class area. So the results are indicated in this table. You can notice there is a reasonable amount of omission errors of urban areas, which have been uh, wrongly classified as pasture, regrowth, bare soil, and riparian vegetation. And of course, we had omission errors of water bodies and riparian vegetation mainly due to segmentation problems. 
the global accuracy achieved around 86% and the Kappa index approximately 83%. In fact, these results are similar to a work in fact, this is the only work I found in the peer review literature on OBIA for classifying land cover and land use from optical and SAR images. This is an article from Walker et al. 2010. It has been published in the IEEE Journal of Selected Topics in Earth Observations and Remote Sensing. Uh, they dealt with different sets of land cover land use classes. And when they dealt with seven classes, which is nearly the same as much as the number of classes used in this work, eight classes, uh, their overall accuracy attained around 85%. So as conclusions and final remarks, we can say that SAR images with eight bits are not ideal input data for classification. When dealing with the mean of the attribute per object, the separability turned out seriously reduced. Some curves have been manifold split, so this resulted in an overfit semantic network, which is undesirable. On the other hand, these SAR images are excellent for segmentation, since the geometric information acquired by such active sensors characterize well the target's boundaries. Regarding directions for future work, uh, with the offers and the knowledge, this is a work in progress. Actually, this has been a pilot experiment for us. And of course, we intend to deal with images with greater radiometric resolution, since this hindrance has been recently overcome by the inter-image team. And we also intend to explore a hierarchical semantic network, initiating with more genetic classes which would then be gradually specialized, obviously in accordance with the segmentation results. And I'd like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you.